Hi folks, today I thought I'd start in the uh, real Nazca. This is uh, how the real Nazca looks. Now this is uh, a photograph that's courtesy of Ile Tours uh, out of Peru. Uh, if you try to get there through satellite photos, you will be disappointed. As I was, the cloud cover or the satellites just don't seem to work. Anyway, uh, the, so you get the aerial photography and it's pretty good. Now these are what I call solar representations. Uh, although although people have compared them to uh, airports or whatever, uh, you know, there is a, a very, very standard function of airports that these are really configured for. This is how it looks when you saturate the color. And the reason I did this is I believe this is actually how these people see things. Now we're back in Marfa, Texas, and this area is what I call an Eye of Horus. And it, that's what the lines are configured for. Now if you come to the central figure, all of these, uh, what look like barns, they're, they're all different. They're no two alike. But they're, today I wanted to show you terraforming. This is what I call a staple. This is the line configuration in Texas. It, and also they use the scratches in, in the earth too. Now I believe that these, these are actually, uh, just like, a, just like a doctor would do stapling two sections of skin so that they don't separate. And I wanted to take you through several of them and show you that these are indeed staples. And there's the lines again. These are actually holding the earth together. And and I believe that's their function. They're large and small, but they, they look actually uh, machine made because of the similarity in sizes. This is what I call a dam. And, and if anybody tries to say that these lines were created by uh, an, uh, regular uh, North American Indians, these, this, I just don't believe that they had the uh, metal to do that. Uh, again, show you the lines. Now a lot of these lines actually have arrows pointing, pointing which way they want you to look. But you can see large and small. And you can see some of them have popped up over time. But you can see the ultimate age of this is amazing. And these are all over the place. And not just in, in some places in this area. They really wanted their art to stay put. Isn't that something? Uh, some of them don't cover the, the scratches in Earth. They wanted to actually control the Earth around it where their lines are configured. Again, large and small. And this is what I mean. This is off-centered, off-centered, off-centered. But then they go ahead and center other lines. But I believe it's because of the the, the uh, split in Earth that they're trying to control. This is a nice feature. This is like a, a spiraling eye or cornea. And this is, this is what happens to staples when you put a staple in, and it and it uh, it pushes a little too hard in the middle. And you can see the difference between reservoirs and these staples. And you can only really see these from altitude. By the way, those are wells. If you're if you're curious, all of these connecting connecting uh, areas where the lines configure, uh, they all connect to well areas, and I believe that's very 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 important. See the split in the earth, 
and see how the, the stables are controlling that area of the earth so it doesn't move. I believe there's no other way to, to say this, and it, this is ancient terraforming done by people who have a technology that, that we obviously can't come close to. This is this is incredible. They they really wanted their art to be permanent. So they sutured any area in the earth that might split in the future. It's it's amazing. And some of these are actually, you know, popping up with, with the erosion and whatnot. Uh, I'm sure that they're they're of brass or copper, uh, some kind of conductive material. Isn't that wonderful? You can see that that they don't just go in one direction or another. Now I wanted to show you some of the new material out of Nazca. This is actually some of the newer. Uh, 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 what they call them, geoglyphs that they found in Nazca cleaned them up apparently. But you can see the line around it and the lines going through it. This is exactly the same configuration as you get in Marfa, Texas. And I believe that these are electrically connecting. This is Marfa, Marfa Texas area. Marfa is up there. There's the Marfa goat up there. But you can see the, the lines very uh, uh, distinctly, even even though this is one of the lesser definition. There is no airport, by the way. The, uh, the actual Marfa airport is way north of that. <clears throat> this is the regular Nazca hummingbird. And I wanted to show you that saturated. And you see how the lines go through it. And they actually brighten at, at these particular points where they go through. I believe it is electrically connecting. And this is meant to be a light show seen from above. Only from altitude can you, can you see this. Uh, from the ground this doesn't make any sense at all. Let's go back here. This is what I believe you have to call the uh, Marfa hummingbird. But I think in actuality, see I haven't even finished it up here, it's so, it's so complex that uh, it's very very hard to do everything and I actually think that this is a representation of more than one bird I think that that you can find several different different kinds of birds as you rotate around north to south and you can see I haven't finished everything so I have to think this is a multiple bird representation pretty cool huh I wanted to show you um, the other new find that I have is here. This is a guy with a turban. That's a, or a profile with a turban. And you can see how the lines configure. The eye is, it's very, very easily noticeable. And this is what it looks, looks like when it's lit up. I just wanted to show, show you uh, what I have found, keep you up to date on the new findings as I find them.
and be very, very public with everything. This is a very, very special area. And I sure wish that people would take it seriously. Until that time, I'm just a guy running around a hill waiting for an archaeologist to call it Troy. And I wanted to say a special thank, thank you to uh, Dr. J Radio for letting me have my say. And uh, if, you, if you can, you can catch him uh, every Tuesday and Thursday nights on Dark Matter Radio. And thank you very much. Appreciate you guys' views.